Good morning and welcome to the Automation Morning Show for Thursday, January 4th, 2024. My name is Sean Tierney from Insights and Automation, and this is a show where I like to cover what's new and happening in industrial automation. And I'm just going to quickly look over to the studio board there to make sure the audio is working, the video looks okay. You guys can see I still have all the stuff, about half of it still left to test today. Just got so many things going on, but uh, in any case, I hope your New Year's off to an awesome start. And um, let's go ahead and get into the news this morning. And uh, we'll start here um, by uh, just uh, giving a reminder to anybody who's new to the show that every single link that we cover in today's show will, link, will uh, join all the links from our previous 156 shows over at automate.news. No www, no .com. Uh, like I said in Tuesday's show, I did find some time a couple of days to go back and uh, export and import um, all the links from the first four months of the show. So now every story we've covered, all 13, I'm sorry, 3,259 stories we've covered on the show, all the links do properly show up here now. And uh, you can see uh, different vendors. Like you see, we covered 12 stories on PLC Next, and you can see we covered 33 stories on Software Toolbox and so on. And so uh, all of those are up there now. And you can, uh, if you just want to filter by a particular vendor, you can do so now. So with that said, that is automate.news. I also want to thank our sponsor for today's show, uh, theautomationschool.com. Like I talked about on the bench here, I'm currently working on the ultimate PLC courses. We'll be working on those till March 1st, and then we change over to work on a new HMI project, which I'm excited about teaching uh, this new HMI. So in any case, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, after that, we'll kind of do multiple things at the same time. We'll be doing HMI and PLCs throughout the summer and fall. So in any case, thank you to theautomationschool.com for making this episode of the Automation Morning Show possible. From there, we go over to our first news story of the morning. I do want to mention, too, I do have the chat up. I don't know if I said that already. So if you want to chat, oh, I should probably also mention, too, let me go back to full screen. Um, if you are watching on Twitter or you are watching on Rumble, today may be the last day we actually publish the video to those services. I'm having a difficult time getting my Twitter, Twitter API and my Rumble API. So um, that's a, the, the key, API key that I need to be able to live stream from the new service we're using. So um, we don't get a lot of viewers on those uh, platforms, and we will still post a link to each of those platforms every day, um, well, at least to Twitter, every day to, the, to where you can watch the show on theautomationblog.com. But right now, the new software is doing YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook, no problem. But I'm having trouble getting the API key for Twitter and Rumble. So just wanted to let you guys know that as we streamline things to keep bringing you the news every day and, and, and other things as well, that uh, if you're on Twitter or Rumble, I don't know if you'll see the news on Tuesday or if you'll just want to go to theautomationblog.com. So sorry I didn't announce that at the beginning. It's kind of early in the morning here. But in any case, um, with that said, I should, you know, I've been up since 3.30 working on this stuff. So, you know, sometimes you lose things in the, in the, in the process, right? Um, I do want to get back to this new story, though, about inductive automation and ignition 8.1.36. And uh, the biggest thing about this latest uh, edition of Ignition is a brand new DMP3 driver. Now they have a, already have one and it's kind of like their legacy driver now. But as I was reading through this this morning, there's so many new enhancements to this new DMP3 driver that if you're using DMP3 with Ignition, you'll definitely want to check out this uh, latest release to see if it's right for you. They also snuck in some other updates as well. Um, alarm notification tweaks, deployment tweaks, and gateway network tweaks. So for all you Ignition users out there, you'll want to check this out. Um, from there, we go over to Pills. They have a uh, new article talking all about their line of safety switches with guard locking. You can see a picture of it right there if you're watching. And um, I thought it was interesting. They do have a link to the product uh, overview page. They also have a, a bulleted list here of all the, uh, the high points of what these products feature. And um, it's always great to see... Uh, companies talking about their products. Um, from there, we go over to three new products from SMC. The first one is the Pushlock Type Dual Speed Controller with One Touch Fitting. And the next one is Water Resistant Stainless Steel Speed Controller. And the last one is a val Vacuum Filter. And um, you can see these here. They have one for uh, pulling out water. They have one for pulling out foreign matter. And um, just some great stuff. If you're using pneumatics, you may want to check these new products out from SMC. 
From there, we go over to our spotlighted product today, and that is our Control Logics Level 1 and 2 course over at theautomationschool.com. This is also known as PAC Basics Extended. And uh, this course is uh, the full edition. The level one and two is $2.99. And when you get that course, you get it for life. You get lifetime support. I'm up there every morning answering questions uh, for students every workday. And um, the other thing is you get two other courses completely free. You get the Logics Live I did in 2021. And you get the new Ultimate course, which I'm filming right now, that's new for 2024. So you buy one course, you get three. And of course, you get, get them for life and you get lifetime support as well. I love the questions that come in. Um, some of them are kind of challenging because, uh, you know, when people don't have the hardware, they want to test everything out themselves, but they don't actually have push buttons and lights. And that can be a little bit challenging, but you know what? I uh, Kudos to them for wanting to learn, right? So in any case, uh, some people uh, ask if they can start out with the standard edition for $99 and upgrade it later. Yes, you can. Just you just contact the automationschool.com and say, hey, I'm enrolled in standard. I want to migrate to extended. It's just a difference in price. That, that's what's been for 10 years now, celebrating 10 years over at the Automation School. Um, that's always been the, and, and will always be, if I have anything to say about it as the owner, um, to uh, that's all be, always be the policy. So we'll protect your investment, whether you uh, purchased one of our first courses back 10 years ago, or you purchased a course today, we want to protect your investment. So with that, and we don't want you to have to buy something twice, that we just very, very much against that. So in any case, uh, that is our featured product today. Uh, from there, we go over to Umron. Now, they have um, a new article out. It's entitled Prioritizing Safety, Understanding ISO 15066 and the Importance of Cobot Safety Validation. Now, this is not a very long article, but it, I thought it was interesting, which is why I'm including it here. And a couple of things. It leads to a paper about their uh, Cobot Safety Validation service that they offer. And they also link to their own cobots. And I don't think a lot of people know that Umron has their own cobots. So I thought that was very interesting. From there, we go over to Grace Technologies and they have another article. I thought this one was excellent. Top five OSHA violations related to lockout tagout. So if you're doing anything with lockout tagout, whether you're managing it or you have to use it, um, you know, I think you're gonna find this interesting because it goes through what the top uh, well violations were. And I, I love that they start off here with a new Bernie and Les uh, comic. And uh, I just love this. You know, the last one we saw had uh, Bernie in the, you know, the National Lampoon's vacation kind of pose with the, with the holiday lights, you know, and being electrocuted. And so here in the first comic after that, he's in a wheelchair all bandaged up. And it says on his uh, T-shirt, New Year, New Me, which just had me laughing this morning. And uh, in any case, um, you know, they kind of, they go through like, what, what are the top violations? And I'll just talk about number one, energy control procedure, 730 violations, right, last year. And they talk about what this is and what the solution is for that. And then they go through others as well. I think they cover five of them. And so in any case, uh, if you're interested in a lockout, tag out, or if you have to comply with it, definitely, uh, I think you'll find this interesting. From there, we go over to the ISA's website. And uh, they have a new article about guarding, or uh, I'm sorry, guiding your secure development lifestyle journey with frameworks and standards. And this article, in a sense, talks about 62443, but it also talks about how it uh, coexists and relates to uh, the NIST standard um, SP800-218. And I thought it was very interesting, the comparison and contrast and how they can work together. And... Um, so if you're interested in that topic, check that out. Now, if you're new to uh, 62443, which is formerly ISA or IEC 62443, um, we actually have had ISA on our show twice. So the first time was podcast 110, and that's where Eric Cosman kind of went through cybersecurity, ISA 99, and 62443. So he kind of covered all of that, and I thought he did a great job. And then the second time was just recently during the holidays, we had uh, Andre Restino um, on the talk about ISA Secure, which kind of really dives deeper into 62443 and some of the real particular elements of it, as you can see from the, from the slide here. So these are both available as video and audio, and they're on most podcasting services if you just want to listen to it. Um, you know, we're on uh, YouTube and we're on uh, Rumble. Uh, for the video, and then uh, for podcasting services, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, Amazon Music, Podcast Index, Podchaser, 
and of course RSS. And of course, you can always just come right up in here and listen to it at theautomationblog.com. Uh, from there, we go over to another article from the ISA. They dropped a lot in the last couple of days. And uh, this one's collaborative palletizing, a logical first step in robotic automation. Now, robots and palletizing is nothing new, but they talk about some kind of the new trends that are really affecting, uh, you know, palletizers and warehouses. And a lot of it has to do with uh, commercial stuff like Black Friday sales and how so much of so many orders are crunched into that short period. They also talk about the new um, subscribe and save models that are becoming so popular where they have uh, automated purchases now going around looking for the best price because they have these big orders of maybe they have 100,000 people who need coffee, right? And so they're going out looking for the best price. And then when the order comes, it has to go out fast, right? So in any case, uh, they have a bunch of bullets here. I thought they did a great job covering all the pros and cons and different things to think about when you're going to use uh, cobots for uh, palletizing. And uh, so I thought it'd be interesting to any of you in the industry. From there, we go over to uh, the final article from uh, ISA, and this is how IoT enabled condition monitoring helps keep produce safe. So I think a lot of times we think of condition of monitoring, we're monitoring motors for vibration, we're monitoring temperatures, right? And uh, just to make sure things are in the right temperatures. But this takes it from another angle. It's monitoring the temperatures uh, that the produce is kept in to make sure bacteria can't grow. So to make sure it's kept at the right temperature at all times, so there's never a chance for any bacteria growth because so many, uh, they say 48 million people get sick a year um, from uh, foodborne diseases. So it's very important that they are always kept in the entire life cycle, kept in the cor correct refrigeration and whatnot. So uh, I thought it was an interesting article, so I shared it this morning. With that, we go over to our featured guide. We're featuring our Control Logics guide. This guide has over 170 free articles and videos on using the Control Logics. I, a lot of times people ask me, do you have free training? Yes, we have over 1,700 free articles and videos on using industrial automation up at theautomationblog.com. That's why it exists. Um, besides the news, that's why it exists. So you can see I just pulled up one of the random pages. We talk a lot about Plant PX on this page. Talk about, a lot about doing message instructions to uh, like messaging a micro 800, messaging over data way plus the PLC fives and slicks, messaging over DH485, you know, uh, connecting up to a, a PowerFlex 525 and, and just so many more. So uh, if you know anybody who uh, has a question about um, the control logics, they can do it there. I'll also talk about a community where you can submit questions directly to me if you can't find an answer at theautomationblog.com. From there, we go over to an article from Oriental Motor. And I wasn't going to include this, but I, I thought it was interesting. It's stepper motor drivers. Should you build them or purchase them? Now, most of us are going to purchase them because we need them to be certified, right? But as somebody with an electronics background, I went to college for electronics. Um, I thought this was interesting, so I left it in there. If there's any of you electronic uh, nuts out there like me, you may find this interesting as well. And uh, from there, we go over to an application story from Bomber. Actually, there's a couple, uh, actually a few applications in this one article, but the longest and my favorite is the one about the automated sandwich line. And you can see they're using their sensors here to detect the, um, I think this is a 2D sensor, profile sensor. So in any case, uh, I just thought it was interesting to read about this machine that's making Subway sandwiches or grinders um, automatically, right? Uh, so I thought that was interesting and um, definitely something you want to read around lunchtime. From there, we go over to uh, an application story from Aviva. Now this one talks about oil and gas. It was really interesting. Um, I've, I've never, I've never uh, read anything about FPSOs before. So um, in any case, uh, very interesting article, but what I liked the most was the pictures of the dashboards they ended up implementing to reduce maintenance costs and unplanned breakdowns. And uh, so just something new and interesting I thought you guys might enjoy this morning. With that, we get over to the video section and I did find a new video from Emerson. They just released a bunch since I was doing this this morning. So um, we'll just go right to the video. I thought this was very well done. I do have it muted, but this talks about their Centronic devices and um, they actually have built-in PID and they have built-in uh, with the, their software, they can actually do uh, trending and monitoring and troubleshooting. And so uh, these are their Centronic series of electronically controlled valves with onboard PID controllers. And I thought the uh, software looked really interesting and I thought it was a well-produced video. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. Let me just pause that there 
and go over to events. So we have a couple events coming up. The first one is from the folks over at Horner. Um, they, they do a weekly uh, show, which is really impressive. A lot of vendors don't do that. And every show is, is available on demand. So there's this huge library of past how-to shows that they've done. And if you're using the Horner o OCS system, um, you definitely probably want to check this out. Definitely, probably. Yeah, that, I don't know if that made a lot of sense. But you may want to check this out. Um, what they're going to do is do a review of 2023. And this uh, next uh, show is January 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And speaking of harder automation, um, we had him on our show recently to talk all about, like, I had no idea. What is the OCS? What is this all-in-one PLC HMI controller they make? And so we had Chuck Ridgway come on the show, and he spent about an hour with us talking about their product line. It was I just found it so interesting. And uh, so that was podcast episode 186. Uh, it did not drop yesterday at 3.30. It was just I was running so late doing the bumpers and doing the ad inserts and everything you got to do to release a podcast that um, these things take about eight hours from soup to nuts to get done. So in any case... Um, uh, it did get out at 4.15, 4.16 yesterday, but uh, and a little bit later on uh, YouTube and Rumble, because I do those second, because they just take so long to upload. But in any case, um, if you're interested in seeing, you know, maybe you're using Siemens or Rockwell or Schneider, and you want to see how some of the other people live, this is a really interesting product line. And uh, Chuck is just great to talk with. He's just like, a, he's been in the business for a very long time, very knowledgeable, and just a great speaker as well. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I really did. Um, even just going back and editing it and hearing it a second time was a lot of fun. Uh, from there, we go over to another event here. This is from the good folks over at Universal Robots. And this is on, uh, let's see, this is going to be on the 18th at 1400. So I'm assuming that's 1400 EST local time. When you pull this up, it may say a different time if you're not in Eastern time. Um, but this is a free webinar and it's entitled Build Your Automation Game Plan Tools to Protect. Tools to Protect. Prioritize winning robot projects. There, I got it out, I think. <laughs> so in any case, always interesting topics. You can see the, all the details here, and I'll include a link over at automate.news if you want to learn more about that. Uh, with that, uh, we get into new literature. I was very surprised I didn't see any new literature interest at Siemens and Rockwell. They usually have something. But um, in any case, Schneider had a great new catalog out. This is their uh, automation and control essentials catalog. So it has like the HMIs, the PLCs, just all those essential products you need, the T-SYS motor starters, um, and so on. I, I think we have a, a new episode on their VFDs coming out next week. I got to check with them to see if they're going to be sponsoring that. But in any case, this is a great catalog and just going through all the essential products you would have like in a small panel. So excellent, great to have on. I think all the major manufacturers have a catalog like this, but brand new for 2024. Also, over at Omron, we found a couple of new pieces of uh, uh, literature here, documentation. We got the new IO-Link uh, Master here, the NX Series IO-Link Master Unit. Uh, this is the NX, for those listening, the NX ILM 400. And then we have a new uh, piece of documentation on their handheld barcode readers, the HS360X. And with that, we go over to other science and technology. And uh, we have two stories I picked this morning from IEEE Spectrum. The first one is, and I just found this really interesting. You know, we like to talk about hydrogen and alternative fuels and, and how to be more uh, energy efficient and so on. And uh, this article is all about, um, you know, instead of doing electrolysis with, uh, by pumping a lot of energy into water, right, to break it up into oxygen and hydrogen, they're using uh, nanomaterials and sunlight to do it. So basically the energy's free. You just gotta get the right nano uh, materials into the whatever liquid you're using um, and then uh, you get free hydrogen right so very interesting I think there's a lot of um, definitely a lot of potential in this area it's something that they've been working on for many many years scientists but I thought if you're into chemistry and in in uh, uh, hydrogen and renewable fuels and whatnot I think you'll find that interesting uh, there was also another one which I thought was interesting which was 11 intriguing engineering milestones to look for in 2024. And I'll just go through these quickly. I did find this fun. Um, they have a story about uh, uh, MIT trying to drill deeper than anybody's drilled before, which I thought was very interesting. I just watched the movie The Core, finally found a widescreen edition of it. I think I got it, ended up getting it used because I couldn't find it new. 
But, um, you know, actually, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a corny movie, but I really enjoyed it the second time around. I hadn't watched it in years, but I really enjoyed it. There's really a lot of stars in that show, too. But in any case, um, it reminded me of that because they're using, what are they using? They're um, using, um, they're not using a drill bit. They're using uh, Quay's energy to do the drilling. So I won't get into the details, but I thought it was interesting. Um, induction ovens have been a new trend that we've seen in uh, the commercial space for a while. And now they have ones with batteries included. I'm not sure what that, I'm not sure what the purpose is there. I think capacitors would be better. But in any case, uh, then we have uh, uh, DAPA is uh, doing a new contest on automated triage robots, right? So if there's a mass casualty event, having robots that can go in and stabilize people. So that'll be interesting. I would not want to be a test subject for that. Um, <clears throat> they have an article about uh, drones being deployed from, aerial drones being deployed from uh, human piloted planes. They have a, um, an article about an activity tracker uh, app. They have an article about, when we talked about this last year, Amazon's new Starlink Lite satellite internet service. Um, they also talk about solar powered cars. Uh, commercially coming available. Now, I remember in the late 80s when I was in college, I wanted to. My college didn't participate, but I was. I had wished I was at MIT instead of any IT because um, um, they had. They were doing a, a putting a solar car into the competition in Australia to see uh, you know who could build the solar car that could go the fat, the farthest, and the fastest on pure sunlight and uh, with solar panels. And um, so this harkened back. Oh, gee, was late 80s. Now it's the 2024 long time ago. But in any case, um, so apparently this company is producing some commercially and they're going to be available later this year. Um, not for me. I get a Dodge Charger so with a Hemi. So I'm, I'm happy where I am. Um, I like this story though. This was about zero trust and the government's adopting it, which is great. I know some areas of the government already has this. My, my, uh, I have uh, several family members who have been in the military. So um, um, this, is, this, is already, this is already something they do in some areas. But they're trying to roll it out uh, 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 government-wide, the U.S. government. And I think that's very important because we talk about zero trust a lot and every government agency should implement zero trust. That way you have a record. If somebody goes in and chains it and allows uh, a malicious device to attach, you'll know exactly who made that change. Um, in any case, or if you're, if you're a fan of 24, you won't because they'll wipe the server log. But in any case, uh, they also have uh, other stories on here, including one about uh, air taxis being available for the Summer Olympics. I don't know how well that's going to be. I'm not going to get in one. I, I won't be going to France for the Summer Olympics. Um, and then a new fastened and sound uh, jet airliner. So I thought all those stories were really interesting. And again, I'll link to this main story if you think they're interesting too and you want to learn more about those. So I'm looking at the time here. Let me finish up. I do want to thank today's sponsor, theautomationschool.com. If you know anybody looking for PLC, HMI, or SCADA training, please mention theautomationschool.com to them. Um, also, I want to thank everybody who's following us. We're closing in on 1,400 people in our community now. This is a new community I set up when I shut down, uh, well, uh, after I shut down the automation forums and we left Patreon because of what was going on there. So um, this is where you can come and you can ask me questions or you can just follow for free. But if you want to ask me questions, it's a whole $2 a month. I know that breaks some people's banks. I'm trying to be, trying to be funny. Um, in any case, thank you to everybody who's up there and uh, everybody who submits questions because I love getting questions um, on what I know. If I don't know, I'll just be honest. Hey, I don't know. I don't have one. Never used it. Um, you can also send news tips in. If you see something and you think I missed it, please feel free to use this form. It's a news tip uh, link here. We also have a feedback link, which takes you to our talkback form. I believe over at automation.news, it's, it's not labeled feedback. It's labeled talkback. So I'll have to change that to make a match. But in any case, if you just want to say hi or give a comment for me to mention on the show, um, maybe you're watching after the fact. I know the majority of you don't catch it live because you're really busy at this time in the morning. Um, also, I do want to thank everybody um, who picked up copies of my eBooks or copies of my video collections. Really appreciate you all, as well as those of you who picked up our coffee cups and T-shirts. Thank you very much. Every penny of profit goes right back into the show and site. So with that, um, just a final reminder, every link that I covered today will eventually make its way up to automate.news. I, I, I'm just joking. I'm really going to try to keep doing it the same day. Uh, just this week's been crazy. Just getting back from vacation. But uh, in any case, we have covered over, and this is episode, I think this is 157. 
And in 157 episodes, we've covered 3,259 different news stories. So that's quite a lot. And every single one of them, every single link is up here. And um, to save time, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm paring down how much documentation I cover. I'm going to only cover really interesting stuff. Um, there's a lot of different documentation. Um, uh, for instance, I think Rockwell had a bunch of documentation on 17, 17, 18 IO, but it was like, it wasn't, I didn't think it was very technical, so I didn't cover it. But um, because it, this is very time consuming to do this every day. But uh, I think it's important to have this database. What did we talk about? And then we can go back and say, hey, you remember we talked about this back in a previous show? We can find the links right up here. And of course, you can search as well. And I, all the new stuff I'm tagging as well. So, if, you know, if it's a barcode read, I'll tag it with barcode. Or if it's an AMR, I'll tag it with AMR. If it's AI, I'll tag it with AI. So the search is getting better and better. Uh, and with that... Uh, just a reminder too, don't forget, we released a new podcast last night about Horner Automation, an interview with them. Very interesting stuff. And with that, I think we're ready to close out the show. 7.57, we beat that 8 o'clock uh, timeline. I just want to wish you all, now this is the last show into Tuesday, right? So we're on a Tuesday, Thursday uh, winter hours. So I just want to wish you all an awesome day and an awesome weekend. Um, I'm, we may get some snow this weekend, so I'm hoping, I'm encouraging my my. Uh, adult children to move their boxes around so I can get my charger in the garage so it doesn't get uh, buried under the snow. But hopefully you're, you're someplace where it's nice and warm. If not, you know, it will become warm again too. Spring is on its way. So with that, I just want to wish you all a courageous and fearless day and weekend, no matter what happens. Always stay courageous and fearless. And I hope you have an awesome day and week ahead. And until next time, my friends, peace.